Good morning. Maybe I've got more than seven minutes, I don't know. Um, I'm going to be looking at this question. Uh, can videos substitute for lectures in the flipped classroom? A lot of people alluded to the flipped classroom. So I'm looking at how we can use the flipped classroom model and get rid of the lectures with something else. Uh, this is who I am. I'm Chris Evans. I'm from University College London. Uh, you click CCL's Interaction Centre. I do research in the design of educational technology interfaces, and I'm particularly interested in interactivity. Um, and I want to start by talking about something that everyone's kind of touched on, uh, the traditional model of teaching in higher education. Uh, we saw a picture, I think, in the second talk um, from uh, the past. We've been teaching through lectures for nearly a thousand years. The, the method, the dominant method of teaching in HC has not changed for nearly a thousand years. And I come from a, a research intensive university and pretty much it's experts trying to uh, share their knowledge with the students. Something that's become known as the sage on the stage. Um, lots of things have changed. Two key things that changed, technology and our understanding of uh, pedagogy. Um, so in technology, students now have unprecedented access to information. So the idea that we need a particular individual expert begins to be questionable. We all know about YouTube. There's plenty of information out there on YouTube. Uh, this one, who's this? Linda.com. Plenty of information on Linda.com. Plenty of expert information out there. Uh, so the question for me, I teach human computer interaction. Uh, this is one of the most famous uh, HCI uh, authors who wrote the textbook on human computer interaction. And the question is, is it worth me explaining to students how to do, for instance, statistics in HCI when they can watch a video from the world leading expert? What's the point of me doing that? I can't do it uh, better than him. So here's a, a traditional format. At my university, probably at many of yours, uh, the expert at the front, some kind of visual display, and the students are writing things down, taking notes. Um, I don't know if you saw the picture, the medieval sort of picture. Uh, very big similarities uh, then and now. If you look at that picture, if you go back to it, you will see there are people in the back row talking to each other, and there's even someone who's fallen asleep. So not a lot has changed in a thousand years. Uh, so that's the dominant model. Um, but our understanding of how people learn has changed dramatically. So the, the, the lecture, kind of, and, and to a certain extent, I guess, videos in isolation, presuppose this kind of model of learning, the information transfer model of learning, where the job is to get the expert knowledge out of the head of the lecturer and to get it into the head of the student. That's what lectures uh, presuppose. It's a transfer process, a passive relationship between the learner and the teacher. Uh, but the dominant model of understanding how we learn today is the constructivist model, a uh, slightly more complicated model. Two key differences. Uh, one is that we now understand that the relationship between the teacher and the learner is an interactive relationship, not a one-way relationship. Um, you have to assimilate what you're being told with what uh, is already in your head. And that brings me to the second part of it. Uh, students don't come as blank books. They come with prior knowledge. And that means that learning is different for every single individual. So what I wanted to do was look at the use of the, the flipped classroom and how videos can help us um, use the flipped classroom to adapt to our understanding of how people really learn today. So here's the flipped model. In the traditional model, we have a lecture for 50 minutes an hour. And then the students go away and they do something at home. Maybe they write an essay. Maybe they do some calculations. Um, their activities are sent outside the classroom. With the flip model, we reverse it, both chronologically and logically, so that they learn online in their own time outside of the class. And then afterwards, they come to the class, and we help them get to grips with understanding the material. That's the, the flipped classroom model. Um, so that means that rather than this expert sage on the stage, the principle of the flipped classroom model is instead I become a guide on the side. That's the terminology that people like to use. 
Uh, so how did that work? So I'm going to talk about two studies that we've done at UCL into trying to use video to help with the uh, flipped classroom. Um, so what we did originally was we had a two-hour traditional lecture. So we changed that in two ways. We took one hour and we replaced it with an online lecture. Uh, this is an interactive uh, video, which I'm going to call an e-lecture. I don't have time, time to explain the details of that. So we replace one hour with online before they come. Then they come to the classroom and instead of having a lecture, they have a workshop. Here's the e-lectures that we give them. It's a bit like a PowerPoint, but you can break down the topics and the slides. They can go in at any particular point. It has narration. They can rewind. They can go as fast or as slow as they want. I don't have enough time to say any more. Two studies we conducted. The first study was with some postgraduates. Uh, we looked at this question. Can e-lectures enhance learning through the use of the flip model? We had 32 students doing a postgraduate master's course in HCI, UCL. And we used this model, and then at the end, we gave them a feedback survey. And these are some of the things they said. They wanted us to continue the e-lectures. The use of the external videos in the e-lectures is amazing. Remote learning is good. They're talking about this kind of flexible distance learning. Not all positive. The e-lectures are kind of boring, said one person. Uh, that's the kind of qualitative feedback. Here's some statistics. 55% uh, thought that the e-lectures made a valuable contribution. That's 77% if you include neutrality. So then what we did is we looked at applying it to an undergraduate course. So I had a course in interaction design. We had 182 undergraduates studying this course. Same model. That's my phone telling me I'm out of time. Same model. Um, same question, except we also wanted to know what they thought of the lectures compared with the traditional lectures. They were used to traditional lectures everywhere else. So we also looked at this question. Here are the results from the survey this time. 79% thought the e-lectures made a valuable contribution. That's 93% uh, if you include neutrality. That's interesting increase for undergraduates here. And we asked them about three different models, lectures only, traditional face-to-face, -face, or a mix, or e-lectures. And we found that 48% would be happy to scrap all the lectures completely and just have our online e-lectures. We then repeated it the following year. Large numbers again, 135. E-lectures made a valuable contribution. This is interesting. 92% including neutrality, thought that the e-lectures made a valuable contribution. 88% now disagreeing. Haven't really changed anything. Taught it the same way, more or less the same e-lectures. And their preferences, where are we? 10% now would prefer only face-to-face -face lectures. Uh, interestingly, the majority of people now think, 53% now think e-lectures only. Get rid of the mix, just have e-lectures. Two conclusions, since I'm out of time. Uh, E-lectures, highly valued by the students. Uh, no doubt about that. And secondly, they also prefer this flip model over the conventional lecture model. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.